Welcome to the Adam Does Movies Podcast. I'm Adam, and today we're going to be talking about movie spin-offs. That's right. These, these are the films that went off the beaten path a little bit from the tried and true formula and, and, and tried to forge their own way. And oftentimes, like 90% of the time, it ends up being pretty bad. And in fact, it kind of hurts the previous entries altogether. It might say, oh, you don't want to know how Han Solo got his name? Or his trusty blaster? Well, let's tell you in this spin-off film, film called Solo. They just don't work and they have so many forced characters and character moments instead of trying to be their own thing. Now, I, I, I wrote down a list, as I often do for these podcasts. I put in the bare minimum, as you know, but um, on occasion I'll write something down. <laughs> and here's some of the spinoffs that I just quickly Googled and came up. There are more, of course. But off the top here... We have Hobbs and Shaw. Now, if you're not familiar with the Fast and the Furious franchise, I'm not sure where you live, but uh, I almost want to go there. I envy you because I wish I didn't know about the Fast and the Furious franchise. There are 10 of these movies and we have a spinoff Hobbs and Shaw featuring Jason Statham and of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. This wasn't even that bad of a film. In fact, I quite enjoyed the stupid Looney Tunes-ness of it all. Had a good time when it was in theaters, never thought about it again. It's just kind of a, you know, standard action movie. It, of course, is modern, so it goes on far too long. It has, like, seven third acts to it. But there's enough charisma there between Statham and Rock to kind of carry it through the finish line. And, in fact, those two characters, uh, Dwayne Johnson specifically, he was only in one or two of the Fast films before he and um, Vin Diesel started butting the heads. So he had to go do his own thing. And uh, I think he's been invited back to Fast 11 or 12 somewhere down the road. But uh, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with that whole mess of a franchise. Yeah, Hobbs and Shaw is an example of something I think kind of working. Because when you're spinning off from something so stupid to begin with, you, you really only have up to go from there. Or at least just kind of toe the line. Kind of using car analogies because we're talking about street racing films. Moving on, we have X-Men Origins Wolverine. This is embarrassing. This is when Fox was putting Origins in front of stuff. They're like, we're going to have a Magneto. We're going to have X-Men Origins Magneto. We're going to have X-Men Origins Mystique. And we're going to start with our guy, our boy Wolverine, Logan, Hugh Jackman. He's coming back. And he did for three of them. These movies did well, obviously well enough. They're not good, though. Origins Wolverine is, is just terrible, schlocky garbage. The Wolverine was the sequel. That one was better, but it did fall into a third act, just CG clusterfuck. Not a terrible movie. And then the third one, I think, is, is one of the greatest comic book movies full stop. It's top 10 for me easily, and that's Logan. They really, they gave us that hard R that we wanted, some great violence, but there's also a great relationship with him and X-23. They have this road trip outing. You have Patrick Stewart in this. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of heart. There's stakes and tension to this superhero flick. If you even want to call it a superhero flick, it's, it's so much more grounded. It's like a last of us with a dude that can regenerate, kind of. Uh, I love Logan. Highly recommend. If you haven't seen it, I, I don't know what you're doing. And the nice thing is that you don't have you don't have to watch the previous two Wolverine spinoff films to enjoy Logan. It really is standalone with some nice tips of the hat to the X-Men films that came before. Excluding the Wolverine movies. Next on here is just a tragedy. I should point out a little tease ahead of time. Um, when this is done, I am going to give what I consider five of the greatest spinoff ideas of all time. I'm being entirely sarcastic. These are movies that... Um, would probably be awful, but uh, I, I racked my brain and I thought, you know what, this would be fun. I'm going to give them five or six movies for them to digest and think, wow, it really is not hard to come up with movie spinoffs. And I would encourage you, if you're watching on YouTube, to go ahead and put your own in the comments. Give me a spinoff movie, friend, like a really bad idea for a movie spinoff. Maybe it's um, The Fridge from Brave Little Toaster, or it's, I mean, that that's some, for some reason, the, fir the first thing that came to mind is a movie that I saw once 20 years ago, Brave Little Toaster. Who, who remembers that film? 
But these are the kind of things that you have to think about. Like, go obscure if you need to. Okay, next up we have Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. They made three of these as well. But unlike with Logan, these didn't get better as they went on. Quite the contrary. Um, you know, I was kind of a Fantastic Beasts apologist a little bit. Kind of. I remember reviewing that one and giving it kind of okay remarks. I think I said it was like a C plus, a B minus C plus. It was a decent first outing. Now, this is coming off of the Harry Potter movies, which I think are all ranging from B to A plus. There's not a bad one in the bunch. There's really not a, a lame one in the bunch as far as I'm concerned. Even the worst Harry Potter is still damn fun for me and the family. We, we, we celebrate the entire catalog. So it was so jarring to see these Fantastic Beast movies come out and, and have an almost all life drained from them. David Yates comes back. He has been criticized for taking Potter in a more somber, darker, more, I guess, drab, boring way. And I, I agree. It worked well in Half-Blood Prince because that movie, that book, everything was so depressing. The magic was gone from the school but from an emotional standpoint so it was really cool seeing that play out but then going forward he just kind of stuck with that brownish color tone that dried out palette of grays and browns and just and just muddy miserable stuff and they're pretty looking films but they just don't have any energy to them and then you add in newt scamander one of the most unlikable leads I've seen in a long time. And I don't be unlikable because he's an awful person. He's actually a very kind, gentle soul. He's very nice. But I don't like him because he's so aloof and he can't talk well and he doesn't have any stoicness to him. He's like the good dinosaur if it was a person. Kind of klutzy, kind of laissez-faire about things. And no, I just, I just, I didn't care for this. He would have been a good sidekick. You don't make your protagonist though this... Uh, just out of control, miserable. And that that's kind of how I felt. They just doubled down and tripled down on it. And then they thought, okay, people aren't really loving this. Let's throw in Grindelwald. Let's throw in Dumbledore. And we'll make their rivalry really the focus. But yet we still went all in on Fantastic Beasts. We are married to this name. And so we're just going to go with it. So they kept finding ways to kind of clumsily throw beasts into all these films. And as they go on, it seems less and less of a priority and more of just something they're required to do. Like a mandatory thing they put upon themselves. I don't understand the point of these movies. And apparently neither does Warner Brothers because they're done. From what I, what I read last, they're just done with them. They were supposed to be five, I think, originally. Maybe more. But then they paired back to four, and now I think they just said, you know what, this is game over. These movies are miserable. And so yeah, just another example of Harry Potter had so many outlets, so many ways it could have gone. And for some reason, I don't know if it's hubris or what, but J.K. Rowling and company were like, let's base it off of some book that's in one of the movies. That's how... That's how much gold I can spin out of my ass at any given time. I can take an obscure reference to a book inside of a book and make it its own thing. No. It turns out you can't. It turns out you really should have a beginning, middle, and end already thought out ahead of time. One of the many reasons why the Harry Potter franchise did so well from all eight of these movies off of all seven of the books. Moving on. We have Star Wars in the game. So you want to talk about big properties. We have Harry Potter. We got Jurassic Park, which we'll get to, of course. And we... Oh, oh no, I don't... Actually, I don't think... Jurassic Park hasn't really spun off. They have Jurassic World. But I don't count that as like a spin-off. That's more of just a straight... That's just a, that's just a straight prequel. Fantastic Beast ends up being a prequel as well. Kind of. Because you do have returning characters. But um, it's... Yeah, it, it's based off something obscure. That That's kind of where I go with these spin-off type things. Jurassic World is basically a soft reboot. Just like episode se uh, 7, 8, and 9 of Star Wars. They're, they're soft reboots. They're continuing on. They're, they're pretending they're part of the big narrative. 
when all is said and done. Rogue One and Solo are two movies from Star Wars that are, are very much just kind of thrown out there to, <laughs> to capitalize, obviously, on Star Wars and of the nostalgia. So you have Han Solo, one of the most beloved characters in all of movie cinema, played by Harrison Ford. You remove the Harrison Ford aspect of it. That's a mistake to me. I know there's people that argue and say, hey, Adam, anybody can be Indiana Jones. Anybody can be Han Solo. And by anybody, I mean, obviously not anybody. But if you find the right actor, they can do it. I kind of disagree with that. I think that some of these roles, they, they really truly are there because of the actor and how they portrayed them. Now, it's one thing if you're going off of a book or a comic or something, something that's already been established, but Star Wars was a brand new property for the big screen. And that's the same with Indiana Jones. So Harrison Ford, which funny enough plays both of these characters, he, he really made these characters his own. And so it's a little different when you're talking about a book where you can't visually see the actor or character, you, you don't get the mannerisms, or if you're even looking at a comic book, it's just not the same. It's not a one-to-one. -one. But here we are talking about Solo. We are recasting the dude. And he's he's only like, a f I think, five or six years younger than he's supposed to be in Star Wars Episode Four, A New Hope. That's not quite translating for me. And the actor they got did a good job. He wasn't bad. It's just, I think people were already burnt out on the whole Star Wars thing and having a different actor play on Solo rub people the wrong way. I wasn't fan. I wasn't a fan of it. And I just thought the whole point of the movie was kind of lame. And I don't really care that much about how he did the Kessel Run or how he got his last name. That's stupid. And on top of that, they throw in the most pointless cameo of all time. Darth Maul at the end. Why? What are we even doing anymore? It's just silly. It's shenanigans. Rogue One might be one of the first movies on this list. I, I'll get, well, obviously Logan. I'll give Logan. I'll give Hobbs and Shaw a pass. Rogue One is a good flick. It's probably the best thing that's come out of Star Wars Disney. I like this movie. The second half is just banging. It's firing on all cylinders, as they say. First half is a slow build. You're introduced to some of these characters that I can't tell you the names of because, um, not great in that department. <laughs> there's there's blind Jedi guy. There's mechanic goggles dude. There's a overbite actress. I I don't know any of their names. Doesn't matter. The movie still works somehow. Even it's kind of like the Hobbit. I know people hate the Hobbit movies. I like the Hobbit movies, and I couldn't tell you the name of like any of the characters. It's Radagast, Radagast, the the brown wizard. That that's a character. I know that one. But as far as the Hobbits themselves, there's like Fatty McGee, there's a uh, little, little, um, what the hell's his name? Return of the King. Why, why can't I think of the name of the Aragon? I'm reading Aragon to my son right now, which is a book franchise. And Aragorn is the guy in uh, Lord of the Rings. That's the king. Yeah, so there's like mini Aragorn, who is the, the king Hobbit. Anyway, I'm losing track. Let's stay focused. Star Wars has done this now several more times and we're going to get to that in a little bit i'm teasing what's to come spoiler it's on disney plus there's a lot of crap on disney plus let's go through a few more of these we have minions which is a spin-off of the despicable me movies love them or hate them those minions aren't going anywhere they bring in the bacon they fry it in a pan and I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the minions. I like the movie is not so much. I like the, the little characters. I like their dumb twinky bodies and how they freak out and how they can't die. They are a lot of fun in the Despicable Me movies. The minions movies aren't that great. Uh, I'd argue they're actually both kind of bad, but I can still watch them just because I like their little silly antics. Um, th that this is another one where it seems like a no brainer for the studio to just say, yeah, People love the Minions. We can make it work on their own. Again, I'd argue they don't really make them work because they still have to shoehorn in a Gru or a villain or someone for the Minions to really interact with because on their own, it would just get too obnoxious to listen to them for an hour and a half. You got to have an actual character who can speak English talking to these people. Oh, God. I just read, these aren't in any order or anything. I just Googled a bunch of, and, and wrote them down quickly. We have the Scorpion King. Anybody remember that chestnut? 
Dwayne Johnson's been in at least two spinoffs. Three if you count Jumanji, but that's more of a remake. They pretend it's a they pretend it's a sequel to the Robin Williams one, but come on, it's like the most pathetic shoehorn sequel I've ever seen. Scorpion King was a spin-off of The Mummy 2, I believe, with Brendan Fraser. It's a great flick. Mummy 1, Mummy 2, both really good. It does end, though, with a really brutal-looking CG Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Absolutely hilarious how they did this. And then they thought, all right, let's make a spin-off. Scorpion King, it's basically Aladdin, um, but not good. It's not a good film. I can't remember a single thing about it. That's how forgettable it is. Not a win in my book. They never made any more after that. Well, maybe they did straight to DVD or home video or whatever. But uh, Puss in Boots. We just had a sequel for this. I think last year was that 20 or was it 2023? I don't know. A year or two ago, Puss in Boots Last Wish, which is a sequel to Puss in Boots. I wasn't huge on the first one. Second one I thought was pretty damn good. Uh, really lovely animation style. They, they played a lot with it. The story was really fun, heartwarming, compelling in ways. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this one. Uh, obviously, it's a spin-off from the Shrek franchise. And uh, yeah, you can't go wrong spinning off of Shrek. And they have plenty of characters you could spin off from it. Oh, Evan Almighty. I love Steve Carell, but... Um, yeah, no, Evan Almighty was really, really atrocious. It, it didn't work on any level. He had to build an arc, and so they kind of played off that whole thing, and then, you know, herding the animals in, and I think John Goodman's in there. He's a like an, he's like a builder, and then he's going to be the, the central conflict for Evan to go up against. I don't even think I finished this movie. It was so bad. Yeah, no Jim Carrey, I guess no interest for me. Obviously, the writing sucking doesn't help either. <laughs> Here's another really random one. Get Him to the Greek. I never saw this movie, but I know it's a spinoff from uh, uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I always want to say Saving Sarah Marshall because I get it confused with Saving Silverman, which is a very funny movie. So is Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Maybe Get Him to the Greek is as well. It's got Jonah Hill. It's got uh, Russell Brand. Russell Brand's character is the one that's being reprised here. Although, I think Jonah Hill was also in... God, I think Jonah Hill was also in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. He was like a waiter or something. I don't know if he's the same character or not. Or I might just be making this up. It's been a while. Regar you can correct me in the comments. I could look, but we're, we're live here. We're doing this live. I'm not, I'm not editing this podcast. That's too much work. <laughs> Come on. I got, I got a family. I got a full-time job. I don't have time for this. Let's go to the next one. Creed. After six Rocky films, we laid this old dog to rest for a few years. And then we brought him back as a coach, training Adonis Creed in one of the better spinoffs, like full stop. Creed is a great movie. I really like, I just rewatched it. It still holds up really well. It's up there with some of the best Rocky films. It's a great companion piece. Creed 2 gets a bad shake. I recently rewatched that one as well. And it's also damn good. I really like that one. Creed 3, uh, I remember liking it as well. I do think I maybe was a little easier on it than I should have been. It's the weakest for me in terms of the Creed movies. But as far as spinoffs go, this is how you do it right. You bring the old dog back. You got Sly Stallone in the corner, in the ring. He's still hitting the bag once in a while, showing he still has some tricks. But he's passing the torch. It feels earned. It feels serviceable to the character. They don't do anything, they don't do anything bad with him. All right? They don't have... They don't have uh, Rocky Balboa suddenly say that he hates boxing and that it sucks and everything he did was all for nothing. And then he goes off and dies in another boxing ring somewhere else by himself. They last Jedi it, basically. No, they don't do that. There's no character assassination in my eyes. They do it, they do it justice. Now, I will say, not having him at all in Creed 3 kind of sucked because I do feel like Creed 2 didn't fully shut the door on the character it didn't give me that sunset ride off with the horse. Although they did that in the last Rambo movie and that was atrocious. So, you know what? This is fine. What they did was good enough. He went to go see his son and uh, it's fine.
moving on. Creed solid. All three movies really good. All right, we have Annabelle and the Nun. If you love The Conjuring, and you really love The Conjuring 2, and you thought The Conjuring 3 was stupid, like me, then you probably don't care about Annabelle, Annabelle Creation, Annabelle Comes Home, The Nun, The Nun 2. I'm sure they'll keep making them. Nun 3, Back in the Habit, whatever they, whatever they can come out. There's probably a, uh, a hand in a case somewhere in the Warren house. Is that what they're, they're the Warrens, right? It doesn't matter. There's a case somewhere with the hand. They're going to be like, all right, we're going to do a movie on this hand now. Or we're going to do a movie on this uh, alligator husk. That's going to be a separate thing called Gator. And that's part of the Conjuring universe. I don't like the Conjuring universe. And I really like the Conjuring. These movies haven't worked for me yet. Some people uh, uh, say that I think it's Annabelle Creation's really good. Or maybe it's the last one. I don't know what movie they were watching, but I didn't like Annabelle Creation either. So maybe it's the home one that they're talking about. Annabelle Homecoming, Annabelle uh, Far From Home, Annabelle No Way Home. I don't know. Penguins of Madagascar. That's a, that's a little chestnut. That wasn't horrible. I mean, That's, I think, the takeaway I got from it. I left as like, eh, that wasn't horrible. The Penguins are fun. They had a TV show for a while, animated show. I think that was all right. Silly slapstick animation. They got good voices. They have a good presence. I remember the first half being a lot stronger than the second. But again, animated spinoffs, that seems like a pretty easy sell. And honestly, I'm really surprised Disney doesn't do more of it. They have one on my list right now. The way they went about it is astronomically stupid. And that's Lightyear, based off the toy Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> this movie is, is so bizarre to me. I can't get over it. You have a toy from a 90s animated film, Toy Story. They spin it off into a movie inside of the movie. So when this film fires up, you have some boring white text that says, I, I'm going to paraphrase, but basically it was like, uh, Andy loved the Buzz Lightyear toy. This is that movie that he went to theaters to watch that made him fall in love with said toy. And then we watch a movie that's like half interstellar, meaning slowish, kind of sad, and, and, and I don't want to say boring because I actually, I really love interstellar. But you know, a slower moving affair. And then another half that's kind of like Scooby-Doo. You have the dumbass trio of characters that are going to be helping or I guess kind of foiling Buzz Lightyear's plans to, you know, be competent because they're such idiots. And then you have a final reveal that's so out of left field and terrible where he's his own enemy as Zorg or Zerg, whatever the hell that character's name is. I just, I couldn't get past how bad the story was. And, and then it was like doubly annoying because I was thinking, okay, Andy watched this movie as a little kid and he was like, yes, I love this character. What? When I was Andy's age, I was watching the Ninja Turtles or Batman or, I mean, there were these cool characters that fought crime or beat dudes up or had cool outfits. Buzz Lightyear had none of that. He was falling constantly. He's getting tripped up by his dumb teammates. He had this cat robot thing that stole every scene it was in. I mean, if I was Andy, I'd want the cat and nothing else because it was the only thing that had a personality in the film. They also had Chris Evans' voice Buzz Lightyear instead of Tim Allen, which was also stupid because then, what, the toy comes out with voice activation, but you make it sound like not Chris Evans? I don't understand. None of it added up. Terrible spinoff. And again, this is off a of Toy Story how easy would it have been? I mean, I, there was a Buzz Lightyear TV show as well. There was an animated show, which people really liked. How hard would it have been to make a Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger show where it is super over the top with explosions. It's, it's got kind of like a cheesy 90s vibe to it because that's when it pretend came out. You could have really had fun with this film. But instead, they... I, I, I just really don't get it. I, this was a huge miss. All right, let's. Th there's plenty of other spinoffs, sidequels, sequels, all that stuff. We'll talk about it more, I'm sure, in a future podcast. But I just that was a quick rundown of some of the ones that jumped off the page for me that I thought would be fun to touch on quickly or longly, which is a word that I just I think just made up.
I'm like Longley's a word. Uh, okay, we have a couple spinoffs coming out on Disney Plus, Peacock. If you want to check it out on the cock, you can. John Wick is coming to the cock in the form of the Continental. Uh, that, that That's the hotel that he stays at with all the rogues gallery of characters. How fun. I have no interest in this. There's also a movie with Ana de Armas called Ballerina where she's blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I'm watching because it's got Ana de Armas in it and I'm a simple man. Ana de Armas looking hot, beating guys up. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Sign me up. If it's like anything like Atomic Blonde, I'm all in because I thought that movie was great. If it's anything like John Wick, I'm all in. Because those movies are a lot of fun. All right, uh, The Batman is getting a spinoff in the form of The Penguin. Penguin's getting a TV show on Max, formerly known as HBO Max. We did a lot of really stupid naming convention changes this year between Twitter becoming X, HBO Max becoming Max. I mean, come on. what What's going on in the branding departments? Nothing good. I can tell you that. Disney Plus, I brought them up. They, of course, aren't done yet. They have 45 MCU spin-off shows ranging from Secret Wars or whatever the hell that thing is with Nick Fury. I'm sure She-Hulk's going to come back. You're probably going to have another Captain America or whatever, the Falcon. You're going to have Loki Season 2 is out. You have Agatha coming out, which is from WandaVision. I can't possibly keep up, and I lost interest watching them. I did not watch the Nick Fury show. I think it was Secret Invasion. I saw some clips. It looked horrendous. Uh, Star Wars is the same thing. We have Ahsoka. I think that's out. People want me to talk about it. I refuse. The Mandalorian got so terrible, I ended up making a episode-to-episode rant video breaking down each one for this last season, and I was a huge fan of the first two. Book of Boba Fett was the beginning of the end. That's another spinoff of the Boba Fett. Remember Boba Fett? He's in exactly 20 seconds of Star Wars in the originals. He stands there and looks cool. And then he dies like a complete dumbass and falls into a Sarlacc pit. And people love that character, I guess, for some reason. Yeah, he had a show. It was was one of the worst things I've ever seen. (laughs) All right. Well, that's the breakdown on movies and all the spin-off stuff that's been coming. Here are five of mine that I, I threw out because I thought, you know what? How quickly can I shit out five ideas for Hollywood to take and ruin? Here they are. Okay, I'm going to screw up this guy's name. I should have looked it up. K. Hugh Kwan? That cannot be right. I apologize. I am not literate and I'm not cultured. So I cannot pronounce his name. We're going to just say the, the actor from The Goonies. Data from Goonies, Short Round from Indiana Jones, and I'm going to give you a two for fun. I want this actor who just got kind of recognized again because he's back in the the limelight. He was in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Awesome movie. I, I I gave it a 10 out of 10. In my mind, I don't actually rate things like that, but I gave it a 10 out. I I really like that film. He he needs to come back because now he's getting a little popular again, even though I can't say his name, don't remember how to say it. Um, We're going to bring him back as Short Round for an Indiana Jones spin-off film. Indy's going to be in it at some point. We're going to de-age his ass again. It's going to look terrible. You're going to hate it. We're going to make it. Disney's going to make it. We're going to give it a budget of $450 million to ensure it loses at least $200 million because that seems to be the playbook over there. Put a ton of money in, get little money back. It's brilliant. It's a surefire miss. Short Round is going to be going on his own misadventures, but he's actually a competent, he's a, he's a competent character. He's going to be Indiana Jones-esque in his own way, and that's going to be fun. He'll have a companion. Maybe we'll bring uh, someone else out of retirement, throw him in, like maybe like a third string character from one of the other indie characters. Let's throw someone in from Temple. Throw someone in from Temple of Doom. No, f- oh my god, no, you know what we do? We bring back Mutt. We bring him in. We bring in the Labeef. Shia LaBeouf is coming back, baby. He's back. He's going to be the sidekick to Short Round. And yes, I know if you haven't seen Indiana Jones 5, you'll be sad to hear that he was killed off camera. They, they got rid of him. They just said, yeah, he died at war. <laughs> he died in war. Poor Mutt. But this is going to be before that, when Mutt is very much still alive. 
before he went off to war. So we'll set it somewhere between, uh, well, I guess we'll set it, you know, after Last Crusade, but before, obvious, uh, obviously before Crystal Skull. Yeah, we'll do that. And that'll be, a, that'll be terrible. And that'll be, that'll be something we'll make. Uh, we're also going to do, like I said, he's going to be back as Data from Goonies. He's going to have, his con he's basically going to be a grown up Inspector Gadget. If anybody remembers Inspector Gadget, it's basically what Data's going to be. He's going to be going on misadventures, of course. We'll have him look for another long-lost treasure. It's going to be a spelunking affair. Bring back maybe a cameo or two from some of the other Goonies, but this is going to be centrally focused on Data. Uh, really, we could Ghostbusters this scenario afterlife and just have maybe he, he, he brings in a phone call to Chunk who's eating some Ben and Jerry's again, and maybe he gets locked into a freezer when he hangs up, classic chunk. Maybe, maybe uh, Sloth is back. Hey, you guys. And he's got a baby Ruth. I mean, there's so many winks and tips of the hat. Data's, of course, going to have his boxing glove that comes out. He's going to have a zip line thing that he can go across. We'll bring back the shuffle truffle. It's all going to be there, of course. It's going to be a big year for the actor whose name I can't pronounce. All right, that's a two for one. So I have four more to give you. Number two on this list, this will be fast. We have to capitalize on Barbie. We just, it made over a billion dollars. It's one of the highest grossing. It may be the highest grossing Warner Brothers movie of all time, which is insane. It's, it's insane to say. So we're going to bring an Allen movie out. Michael Sarah played a character named Alan, a discontinued product from Barbie. He's kind of a nerdy, dorky character. Uh, just nobody really paid attention to him. Well, now we are going to pay attention to him because Michael Sarah is going to get a spinoff film called Just Alan. It just makes sense. Uh, it's going to focus on obscure Barbie characters. Discontinued lines, maybe some new ones that haven't been out yet because we get that synergy. We get that cross-promotion get people to the stores to buy him. Alan's going to go on a road trip of his own. He's going to find himself. And he's going to come out better on the other side for it. We'll have a cameo by Margot Robbie, of course. Barbie cameo. She's not going to be in it for very long, though. Ken, I, I think maybe we do... You know, maybe we have a Ken-Barbie cameo crossover event where they're just in a scene together on the couch. They say goodbye to Alan, and that's it. Then we don't see him again because this isn't about them. It's about Alan. It'll make a billion dollars. Let's move on. Rocky spinoff, not Creed, not even Creed's daughter, which I know they already teased was going to get a spinoff TV show of sorts. Yep, that, that happens in Creed 3. And it was so painfully obvious what they were doing and cringy. No, this one's going to be on Polly. Yeah, Uncle Polly. Film's going to be titled, Hey Polly. Adrian's going to be in it. They're going to be younger. This is going to be when Polly is growing up on the mean streets. He's going to have to kind of make ends meet. He's going to have to help raise his sister. They have an abusive father, abusive uncle. Like it's it's going to be a it's going to be a very gritty, tough as nails type of film. And we're going to learn that Polly actually used to box, and he was really damn good. There was only one thing stopping him. And that was the bottle. That was his alcohol problem. It's going to get sad. It's going to get honest. It's going to get tough. Uh, <laughs> Adrian, in my notes, I see Adrian's going to be played by Rachel Zegler. <laughs> uh, before the movie comes out, Rachel's going to be going around on a little press tour talking about how much she hates the Rocky films. <laughs> and she only watched one of them for the first time just before the interview and thought it was terrible. And, uh, and maybe Polly won't be in the film. We'll see. No, um, I could see that. I could see it happening. You spark some controversy, you get people riled up, and yeah, we have a picture at the end of the day. It's just Polly. Or, hey, Polly. Just Alan. Hey, Polly. Next on the list, Star Wars Galaxy Drift. This is going to be a prequel to the prequel of pod racing. About pod racing. We are going to... We're going to uh, introduce, mm, who do I got here? Watto's great, great, great grandpa, Otto. And he is the founder of pod racing. He, he helped build it from the ground up in his backyard. And it's just going to be this very 
this very fun, high fantasy adventure. You're gonna have other Star Wars characters coming and going in it, of course. R2-D2 is gonna fucking be there. You gotta have R2-D2 in there somehow. It's it's gonna be fantastic. Lots of pod racing going on. We're gonna have montages where Otto and some of the other plucky characters are going to try to build these contraptions and and, and test them out. And there's gonna be things blowing up. And it's gonna be state of the art CG. It's gonna cost five hundred million dollars to make. Weta Studios is going to have to go bankrupt because of all the extra hours and time crunch Disney's throwing at them. And we're just going to absolutely think it's miserable. That's going to be Star Wars Galaxy Drift. Last but not least is something I want to get serious about. Serious black about, if you will. Well, that's right. We're going to do a serious black spinoff set before, of course, Harry Potter. This is going to be a young serious Bellatrix Lestrange is going to be in the mix. The whole black family is going to be thrown in. Sirius now played by Timothy Chalmay because he's the young up-and-comer still. He's in Dune. He's Willy Wonka. Let's make him serious black for no reason at all. Also, we are going to race swap. We are going to race swap Bellatrix. She's going to be played by, who did I put down here? Zazie Beats. She's from Deadpool 2. She's from Bullet Train. And now she's gonna be in uh, she's gonna be in my movie, Serious Black. Honestly, that casting's pretty. I think she could knock it out of the park as Bellatrix. She she has that energy. I'm glad I put that down. Uh, and now, honestly, I'm kind of selling myself on this movie. I think a Serious Black spinoff would be great. Maybe not so much Timothy Chalamet, but I think that you get the right character in this. I mean, fuck, sky's the limit here. Really, it all boils down to the fact that anything would have been better than Fantastic Beasts as a spinoff. You could have spun off of so many of the auras in the damn movie. I mean, Mad-Eye Moody w was considered one of the greatest, you know, wizard auras out there. Why not do a CSI style show with him where he's going on a globe trotting adventure, taking out some of the worst of the worst dark wizards? He and Sirius Black could have a buddy road trip movie together. I mean, come on. You could throw in Padfoot. You throw in uh, Harry's dad could be in the mix, a cameo. It's just, what, what are they doing with Fantastic Beasts? You throw Lupin in the mix? You get Tonks in the mix? Come on. Lafleur in the mix? No, that doesn't work. Um, she'd be too young. Okay, so that's those are my picks that I took all of 20 seconds. Well, that's not fair. I probably took a couple minutes. I, I took probably five to 10 minutes to quickly pull out of my ass some spinoff ideas for Hollywood to use. Now it's up to them to take them and run or they can leave this cash on the table. Outside of my comical overblown budgets, I said, I think honestly, looking back, most of these would be huge hits. I think most of these would actually make a lot of money. And that just shows how easy it is to come up with stuff. <laughs> okay, that's the conversation today. It was all about spin-off movies. Again, I didn't touch on all of them. There's a couple caveats here and there. Things that might not be considered spin-offs or should be considered spin-offs. Let me know if you're watching on YouTube. Put them in the comments. Please like the video. Share the podcast around. I'm on Apple. I'm on Spotify. I'm on a lot of other platforms. I'm on Amazon, I think, and Google Play. Let's keep building this up. It would be fun. Uh, I also have heard from some people that they want some of the live videos that I do because I do a Tuesday live stream at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time and on Friday at that same time where they're, they're a good hour to two or three hours depending on who I'm talking to and what kind of mood I'm in. And people have been saying, Adam, put those in audio format or put those on you know, podcast services. If you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments. It's easy for me to go back, pull those down and kind of edit out the bullshit and just get to kind of the meat of the conversation. And I can put those up as well. So you could have the Monday podcast that comes out each and every Monday earlier on Spotify and stuff. I think it goes out at eight or nine. I can never remember what time I schedule it for. And then I always do a watch along premiere at around 11, 30, 12, again, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. So we could do a live as well that would go out on Spotify uh, after the fact, after I do it on YouTube. 
All right, let me know that. Um, yeah, I'm on Patreon, patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. There's a $1 tier, there's a $10, there's a $30. It's just a way to help support and keep me making content because this is a one man operation. I have a family, I have a job. This is a hobby that I do rely on for income because I have a wife that's sick. It's hard for her to work. So we're doing everything we can to keep her healthy, keep her home, keep the kids happy and keep us all just going strong. So patreon.com slash Adam does movies. If you're on YouTube, you can hit that join button and become a member right there as well. There's exclusive videos, 300 plus exclusive videos for any tier level. The $10 up gets access to my Water Wars movies collection. There's four of them. They're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. And then as you get higher, there's more perks as well. Oh my God, I almost just choked on my own spit. So clearly I've been talking way too long. Thanks again, and hopefully I catch you next time.